Hey, it's Christina with Rocking in Media, Northwest Kansas Radio, and I have Jared Neiman with me today. Hi, Jared. It is good to see you. Thank you for right. uh, let, let me chat with you a little bit. Yeah, I want to read something from your website real quick, and then we're going to freestyle it way up, okay? But right. uh, from Academy of Country Music, Country Music Association, and CMT award nominations to headlining and touring with some of country's hottest acts, including Dirk Bentley, Brad Paisley, and Keith Urban, Neiman continues to make his mark by creatively pushing boundaries while still offering a sincere nod to legends before him. That came from your website. Do you well, think I need to thank I need to thank whoever wrote that. I honestly don't know, but they made me sound <laughs> way cooler than I am. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> way cooler than you are. And you do it all. I mean, you you are a songwriter, you're a singer, you play instruments. What do you when you refer to yourself, what do you do for a profession? Man, just to just love music. I don't know, just encompassed by music. I really don't know. I guess just however it'll have me. Right, right. And for people who don't know, you graduated not far from here. That's right. right. Three hours south down in Liberal. Right. So, so Kansas boy. That's right. Born and raised and uh, enjoyed playing sports against Colby in that area and been there many times. I have to laugh because... Um, we graduated around the same time. I loved oh, yeah. Colby. And uh, <laughs> I was a cheerleader, and we went down there for the football game. And uh, there was the horse with the Indian riding across across the uh, the field. And the liberal people all, like, took up the whole stands. And the Colby crowd is, like, this big. And I'm, the whole time, I just wanted to cry. We're going to die. We're going to just get slaughtered. And we did. Uh <laughs> well you know that we did we had a great football coach and they you know they definitely took it extremely seriously they'd call our house at night to make sure everybody was at home so we had our mm -hmm. own you know football curfew and just all, all the uh, stereotypes you see on tv but it was something really fun to be a part of and and uh you know so, sometimes we won sometimes we lost but it was always uh some of my fondest memories right sure. right so do you have any songs that reference kansas I do. I wrote a song called Yellow Brick Road just because of the irony. You know, anytime you tell anybody you're from Kansas, that's the first thing they bring up is Wizard of Oz. Uh -huh. So I was I was in Texas and I was just I was thinking about Kansas and it just dawned on me that, you know, when you when you die, if you're lucky enough to go through the pearly gates, there's the the uh, streets of gold. And to me, that was like the Yellow Brick Road. And it just reminded me, you know, the closest thing I've ever been to heaven was having a chance to grow up out there. And it's I feel like Kansas is like a it's like a a secret weapon being there because you truly are in the heartland. So you have influences from all over the country. So anywhere you go, no matter how different it is from where we grew up, it seems like you can still find a way to way to connect and, and get along. And uh, it's just, it's really cool. You know, I hardly get to go back to Kansas and I hardly run into Kansas. So it's always, uh, really? always is exciting when, when it happens, you know, I'll, right. I'll see a, a KU or a K state shirt roaming, you know, at an airport in Milwaukee or something. And of course right. I've always got so you're the one stalking them? Yeah. I'm stalking you? <laughs> 100%. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> right. So um, your first guitar, I thought this was an interesting story. Your first guitar, your mom won. Is that correct? Yeah. There were, in Liberal, there was a uh, our, our fair. There was a Tracy Lawrence concert, and they were just uh, having like a raffle, a drawing. And, and uh, I was so excited to go to the concert. It got rained out. So they rescheduled it. It was during football season. And our coaches told us at practice that do not go to that concert because it was the night okay. before a game. And I was bummed out because I already wanted to be, you know, part of country music. And uh, so my mom goes, well, maybe I'll win the guitar, you know. And I'm like, yeah, right. And she came, <laughs> back, she came back in the house. It didn't have a case or anything. It was just this old, you know, uh, kind of starter Yamaha guitar that Tracy Lawrence had signed. And I was like, you, there's no way you won that. And she did. So it was I spent every day. You know, like the hear you, you know, like you hear working your fingers to the bone, trying to learn it, and, mm -hmm. and it's, I wore the uh, I wore the signature off of it with my elbow. So my mom, they moved to Fort Worth, and he he was doing a signing, and she took that guitar back in there and surprised me, and, and he re-signed it. That's and awesome. Since, and since then, I've had the opportunity to become friends with Tracy, and and uh, he knows the story well, and I've showed it, shown him the guitar before. That's awesome. Do you hope that uh, something that you do will influence a kid to absolutely. Absolutely. country music? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's music such a special thing. It truly is like the universal language. And, uh, you know, once 
whether you're playing it, you know, on the, on the air or playing it on a stage, you're touching people. And it's easy to forget that sometimes when you get really in, you know, you're right in the thick of things. It's easy to, and you're dealing with a lot more of the business side and other stuff that's, you know, not, not as fun. It's, it, it takes someone coming up saying, Hey, you inspired me to do this or, Hey, this song was played at our wedding or my mom's funeral. And it just, it floors you every time. And you realize it takes you back to being a kid and, and what changed your life whenever, you know, music affected, you know, affected me that way and many other people. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Who do you think, uh, I mean, you know, you talk about in influencing people who influenced you. You know, my parents owned a skating rink when I was real young. Ooh, and so, you know, it's kind of like at the last of the heyday. And and uh, so at first, just, you know, when we were out of school, we'd go there and the music was just always playing. And I, I just think it, you know, really just that atmosphere of just music being associated with fun and family and friends just kind of is what drew me in. And then, you know, when it came to country music, you hear all kinds of different great, great songs out there. But in our state, especially, you hear the lyrics to a country song and you look out the window and you're like, well, that's us. That's they're singing about <laughs> us. And it just, you know, it hits you differently. And so I uh, just started digging into, you know, growing up in the nineties country stuff, you start digging through your heroes, heroes. And, you know, then you start, you know, looking at older, the older George Strait stuff and Randy Travis and Keith Whitley. And then it's like, who's their heroes. And he, it's Merle right. Haggard and those guys. And then Lefty Frizzell, is kind of the one that he came out in 1950 and he's just the one that was like the, the the granddaddy of a certain sound that I love that inspired so many people. And I realized how many people weren't familiar with his music and it just kind of became a, uh, a goal of mine to sing his praises. Any, any chance I got, in fact, my very first tattoo I ever got says lefty, you know, I'm left-handed and he's my hero. So I put cool. it in stone or at least cool. in flesh. Right. Put it in flesh. Right. So if you weren't doing what you do, what do you think you would be doing? Well, if it wasn't music related, you know, my, my dad started a roofing company and, I, and he's still, he's retired, but he just gets bored and wants to get out and do stuff. And he's just always worked so hard. So I'd probably be trying to help him mm -hmm. stay off roofs. And, and I mean, <laughs> I, I really, I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you what, though, that's what's cool about music is I did get my foot in the door as a songwriter and then was fortunate enough to sing some songs. And now I've gotten more on the producing side. I'm producing Lee Bryce's new album and uh, going out there tonight to finish the first first single off his next rec next record. And we've been dear friends for over 20 years now. And so to, to have that opportunity and that honor, you know, really means a lot for him to put faith in, in me to help continue his uh, his awesome career. And, and so I've also been picking up other instruments. And that's what's great. You just there's so many different hats you can wear in music. Right. And, and, Fun to, fun to just never quit learning because the more you learn it's actually easier to learn something else and i feel like when you when you come out on the road like when lover lover came out you're like all right all my preparation i've done and i'll you know paying your dues and etc all leads to this moment and then you don't really try to learn anything new you just kind of feel like that's what you got and then you just start realizing man i should just challenge myself in other ways so it's it's been really cool because you always just feel like a begin you can always feel like a beginner no matter how much experience you've had Right. Right. Well, and there's so many facets that you can get into, you know, and try different things. And, uh, you know, I understand that, that, you know, that's for me, too. That's it's it's all fun. Yeah, it's just what, whatever's next, you know, but it's music just kind of if you pay attention to it, it'll tell you where to go. That's right. That's right. Um, so what can we expect on Friday night from you? Well, hopefully it's a big family reunion. Because, so, you know, a lot of us may not know each other. Maybe I will see some, you know, some familiar faces that, that I'm surprised by. But, but really, it's just for me, it's just always a, a treat. And and also, you know, you can pull out songs like Yellow Brick Road and other things that make you feel, you know, feel, feel at home. And, and uh, I just hope everybody will come out and let us let us jam and uh, and like I said, have a, a friends and family reunion and, and get a little wild. I mean, it is going to be the weekend and it is the summer. <laughs> so we're, we're, right. As the kids say, I think we'll get turned up or, or whatever the term is. We're going to do that. I don't know what it is. I mean, we, we, we could just say good jiggy with it. I mean, is that yeah. more of our that's, era? That's, yeah, that's more our era. We'll, we'll get, <laughs> yeah. Jiggy 2.0. Right. <laughs> For sure. Well, I really appreciate you being with me and um, we're super excited to see you play. We're super excited to have you here. Um, 
you know, you're going to be here Friday night. You're, we're going to open the gates at five. And uh, even if it rains, we're still going to be out at the fairgrounds in a building, which we're everybody cross your fingers that we don't get rain. Um, yeah. We have a backup plan. We'll do the sunshine dance. And, and yes, That's thank right. you. Thank you for that backup plan because the show must go on. And I, I can't thank you enough, one, for having me, two, for, uh, you know, for, for helping spread the word today and getting to know you. I look forward to seeing you in person. And, and like I said earlier, I hope I know everybody work, works hard and has a, the, a little thing called the real world and real life going on. But uh, we'd love for yeah. you to take, take time right. out. Come, love to play some music. I think it's going to be really great. So to wrap this up, I have a couple of fast questions for you, and they're one-word answers. Are you ready for this? Oh, no. Filter, filter, filter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your favorite food? Sandwiches. <laughs> Turkey or ham? Turkey. Uh, favorite movie? What dreams may come. Or did I have to do a one-word movie because you said one-word answers? Well, no. I mean, no. Rambo. Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you could be a superhero, who would you be? Well, Superman has the most powers. I think I'd rather be, you know, uh, Superman than Batman and just, you know, have to pay for everything. <laughs> pay for all my powers. <laughs> Let me ask you, what would you be? If I was a superhero? I would definitely, I mean, I would have to have a power that I could fly. Yeah, I definitely get through traffic a little easier. Well, I mean, I think just the feeling of floating on the air. I mean, how cool could that be? And that would be awesome. We got to figure that out. I know. Um, okay, I'll get to working on that. It might take a while. <laughs> All right. Um, white or wheat bread? White bread, for sure. Okay. And boxers or briefs? Uh, boxer briefs actually okay. a hybrid. <laughs> i was raised i was raised on the old tidy whities don't get me wrong you know right right I, I'm, well, not, I'm not scared of that i'm not scared i'm not scared of those but i like the boxer brief okay perfect well i look forward to seeing you on friday getting to meet you in person and seeing you perform well likewise and thanks again for everything and uh take your vitamins and minerals because party on Party on. Awesome. And uh, so don't forget, at Thomas County Fairgrounds, it is our pop-up concert, our very first one featuring Jared Neyman and our own Bro uh, Brock Wagner is going to open for you. And he is actually from Colby, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, uh, doors open at 5, Brock will go on at 6.30, and Jared, you're on at 7.30. And it's free for everyone. Hey, that's... Thank that's you to our sponsors. Gets, that's good as it gets. Yes, thank you, sponsors. All right. See, now there's we'll no... Now there's no <laughs> Now there's no excuse not to come, right? Right, exactly. There's no excuse not to come. <laughs> and all the money that's raised will go to the Thomas County Fair Board um, for beverages and food. So it's a great cause for you to come out and eat and have a great time. And don't forget your lawn chairs. That's a good call. All right. Thank you so much, Jared. You all have a great day. Thank you so much.